Today you presented an Oxfam report on uh, in poverty, women in work, but also in poverty in Europe. What were the main findings? Well, the findings is that we have a huge problem with uh, within work poverty of women. Uh, like um, one uh, in, in two women that access a job is in work poverty at the moment in the countries like Spain, which is a huge number, uh, which means uh, that we have a new phenomenon, which, uh, which is that we have people working that actually are not able to uh, get out of poverty. And this has a, a woman face. It's a, a phenomenon that is mainly... Um, uh, that, that, that affects mainly women. And that is why I think this is something that the European institutions need to address. Uh, from the FAM committee here in the European Parliament, we've been calling since the beginning on tackling the issues that pr provoke uh, poverty in, in, in work uh, women, in work poverty in women, like for instance, tackling uh, um, the gender pay gap or tackling, uh, for instance, that phenomenon like the precariousness or temporality of the new contracts is something that is mainly aff that aff affects mainly women, and those are things that uh, that uh, pr that provoke that today we have uh, we have this phenomenon. Uh, but I have the impression that the European institutions at the moment are not reacting to this, and I think they should, and they have tools to do that. Um, we have something called the European Semester, where we do we do every six months recommendations of economic policies to member states, and we have been saying that since the beginning of the legislature, there's no gender aspect at all on those recommendations. So we want absolutely that on the employment and economic governance recommendations, the issue of uh, of in poverty work uh, that affects women uh, uh, is addressed. So that is why uh, we wanted to uh, to explain and to present this report from Oxfam uh, here in the European Parliament today. You mentioned flexible working, temporary work. It's not just a, a general is issue for the workforce. It's a general issue for the workforce, but those phenomena affect mainly women. So if you take the number of uh, persons that have a temporary contract or, um, or people that are uh, occupying um, uh, segments of the workforce that are particularly pre pre uh, preca uh, in precarity, that they mainly affect women. Uh, for instance, if we take uh, one of the issues I've been following the most in my country in Spain, where does the world of touristic sector is very, very strong. Uh, if you take the, the workforce in the tourism sector, particularly in hotels, this is mainly uh, uh, women employed in that workforce. And here we find uh, extreme, uh, very important phenomena of precariousness and of, um, of, uh, of very extremely low salaries. Uh, and that is why, um, of course, this phenomenon affects all population, but particularly women. This is in the statistics. In the European Parliament, women are, generally speaking, better represented than in most national parliaments. Do you think this makes a difference to how these issues are perceived and the importance given to them? It does make a difference. Uh, when the decision makers are all men, then, of course, the gender issues tend to be disregarded. Uh, and um, of course, well, I am a man working in, uh, in gender equality and I am all the time calling my colleagues to be more involved on that issue. But uh, of course, we need more women in, uh, in, uh, in decision-making positions to address uh, better the, the, those issues. Uh, it's true that the European Parliament has a, a ratio of, uh, of women uh, a bit higher than many member member states for other member states parliament, but um, but today, uh, but still we are at thirty percent, so we still we have a long way ahead before before full equality. But in general, yes, I mean uh, it's linked. I mean there is a clear link when there are more women represented in the decision making positions. This affects also public policy.